that's me. Um, I just wanted to provide a bit of context, I suppose, for, um, for, for the discussion that's going to go on this evening. Um, when, we, when we think about um, water and sustainable urban water management, we tend to think of the things that Chris was talking about, water shortage um, and so on, and I've got another slide coming up next on that one. But I just wanted to remind everyone that there's another dimension of water in the urban environment that is really important, and that is the stormwater that we generate. And um, this slide really just gives you a, a general idea about how we've been increasing urban runoff and stormwater pollution loads incrementally um, as our city has expanded. And you know, um, for much of the city's history, we've been doubling those loads um, and volumes of stormwater every 30 years, such that now, for example, for nitrogen, which is one of the key um, pollutants which puts Port Phillip Bay at um, risk, um, more than 60% um, of the nitrogen load from the catchment comes from the urban area, in the Port Phillip Bay catchment, comes from urban areas which only comprise about 24% of that, of that total catchment. And the background for that slide is, a, uh, is an elbow bloom in, uh, in Port Phillip Bay. The other is that dimension that Chris was talking about, the water shortage. And this is the long-term rainfall record um, for catchment inflows. What it describes, I guess, is the variability there, but the long-term average, as Chris said, was, is about 600 millimetres. Um, the last 10 years or so, our average inflows between 97 and 2006 have been 367 um, gigalitres. Did I say millimetres before? 600 gigalitres, sorry. Uh, 367 gigalitres, and in 2006, the um, inflows were 165 gigalitres. This is totally unprecedented. That is the lowest uh, catchment inflows um, ever recorded. And the climate scientists are now telling us this, this is what we can expect in the future, that we have gone through a step change um, in climate. And this is a really serious dimension of um, you know, what we're facing in the future. Um, and I guess I've cheated here by putting lots of pictures on one slide. <laughs> but, but I find, um, you know, Rebecca's research is really interesting because what I find is we tend to um, self-limit our thinking about, about what is possible. I think there's a real change happening with the community at the moment. There's an expectation that the public institutions and government are going to do things that um, enable us to meet these challenges. We're not necessarily expected to know what all those challenges are going to be or know exactly what we're going to do but we need to be doing things to meet those challenges now. I think, our th I think we do tend to self-limit. If you look at those slides going you know, pre-1900 through to 1950 through to 2000, our context is the here and now, and we, we look at where we're at the here and now, and we think that's the way it's always got to be. But if you look back in time at the way our city was pre-1900s, then what it was like in the 1950s and what it's like now, it's a huge change and we need to go through a real step change, not just an incremental transition, we need to make, make that leap. And we need to be confident that we can actually make that leap. Thank you.